You ever notice that when you really are trying to get somewhere, it can be a huge challenge. You work hard at it, you're trying to get a certain job, you know you have been gifted by God, you try to get there. And obstacle after obstacle after obstacle hits you hard. I've noticed that especially in the music industry, uh, one of the things I actually like is American Idol. And when you watch them, how hard they work, how hard they fight for it. There is only one winner. And half the time, I don't even think it is the right one that wins. It all depends on voting. So what is it that you can do when it is hard, when it's become a struggle? You know where you need to go, but you just can't get there to the point that you want to quit. And about the music. There is approximately $4.63 billion spent annually on Christian media. This includes books, movies, and other merchandise. Christian gospel music is considered one of the latest or one of the fastest growing areas in recorded music. Total music sales are more than a half billion annually. And you would think with that big of an industry, it would be easy to get in and to get ahead. But um, that's not the that's really not the case. And with me today is Stacy Frenis, and she is really has experienced how hard it is to move forward. And at the point that she wanted to quit, she chose to keep fighting God's fight. And I think you'll know, and I think you'll like what the result became out of that. Stacy, welcome. Thank you so much. Good to be here. So you started with music. I've seen some of your music. You're phenomenal. You're absolutely great. Thank you so much. And then, but it didn't, how, how did music start for you? Well, I, as a little girl, I was a lover of words and music, you know, kind of separately and together. I was always um, in love with words as a little girl. I used to write poetry and uh, essays and, you know, uh, stories and journals. I would keep diaries as a little girl. And then um, as I got a little bit older, um, I, the songs really, the, the words on the page started to turn into songs in my head. They started to have melodies and I wanted to sing them instead of just read them. And uh, so I asked my parents when I was about 12 or 13 for guitar lessons and piano lessons. And they looked at me like I was an alien from another family <laughs> because <laughs> neither of my parents is musical. No one in my family is musical. I just wow. felt this kind of, you know, stirring up inside of my heart, this sense of wanting to, to write songs. And um, so, yeah, it began very early for me, very organically out of my own love of, of music and words. When I was a little girl, uh, my mom could, you know, we had three children, and when she cleaned the house on Saturdays, she would put me on the couch with a couple of record, you know, record albums um, on, the, on the stereo, and she could just play music, and she could go do her cleaning all day, and I would sit just mesmerized by the music because I loved it so much. It was my love language, you know, as a child. Wow, that almost is like, it almost sounds ridiculous because that's yeah. usually doesn't make sense, you know, that that likes happen. So you, you, you like what you're doing, you continue in doing that. What was your first performance like? Well, um, you know, as a teenager, I would play guitar and, and go to different coffee houses and youth groups at churches. I, I was a believer as a young girl, and that was a blessing for me. And most of my songs came out of wanting to write about my, my life with God and what that was like. And I was trying to express things in ways that were new and different. And um, so I would sing for youth groups. I would sing for coffee houses. I, you know, I was very scared at first to get in front of people and share my heart and open up my life w with my songs because it's like having someone read your, your diary or, or your most personal thoughts. But um, over the years in teenage, in, in high school and in college, I got more used to it. And it just became the way that I processed information. You know, I, I as a songwriter, um, life, I go through life thinking in terms of songs and, and metaphor and imagery and how I could communicate through song and melody. And so it's been something that it's just always felt like it's part of my personality. And, and I have loved it since I was a, a kid. Wow. Well, that, that is, that's just great. But didn't you start with something like that you're on your grandmother's funeral? They, she asked you to actually 
sing. I would have been intimidated to to kind of start she, out like that. Yeah, that was a scary first time of you know getting in, getting a, sitting in front of a piano and playing for people. And it was at my nana's funeral, and my nana was a very special person in my life. She had always shown me, um, you know, she was a seamstress, a tailor, and she was very uh, passionate and artistic, and did what she loved in her own gifting all her life. And then um, her. You know, asking me to sing at her funeral was kind of a way of, I, of me giving my gift back to her, and um, it was scary. I sang two of the songs, two of the, her favorite hymns that she would sing and hum in Swedish or Norwegian, mm -hmm. and she, she was um, quite a character. But yes, my voice cracked. I barely got through it. It was very hard, but um, it was also a beautiful beginning of something that I knew was right for me. It sounds like she gave you that gift. Now, how hard is it from that point, falling in love with performing mm -hmm. and, and just serving God with your calling, how hard is it to turn to the professional world? It's very hard. There's, there, um, because there's such a tension you know, between as an artist wanting to create something beautiful that you love um, and then suddenly um, taking that out into uh, into the world as a commodity uh, to say to say to people do you like this would you like to buy it uh, you know that process is very scary um, it wasn't until I was finished with college where I recorded my very first recording um, for sale and then I started um, that summer after college I, I, I um, sang in front of a very well-known Christian artist, a huge crowd. It was the first time in front of a huge crowd. But it was wonderful. It was scary, but it, but it, it definitely, I got bit by the bug, so to speak. I loved yeah. it, and I knew that was for me. Um, but from then on, it became um, very difficult to, um, to keep you know, getting the funding to make records, to record yeah. them, and then to sell them. And, um, you know, there's kind of a... There's the industry, which is the, the big major labels, the, the record labels, and then there's sort of the independent world. And um, for a while, I, I was happy in the independent world, but I really wanted to break into the, 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 the world of, of record labels. And I, I attempted to do that. I went to Nashville when I was uh, just in my early 20s, and um, it didn't work out. It's hard, isn't it? <laughs> it was very and hard. You work so hard, and you fight so hard for it. And you wonder, why is that break to, it's like hitting a brick wall it that was. gets taller. It's, I know all about that. Yeah. And you know, there is a lot more to that because have you hit that brick wall? How are you getting through? You want to hear what is next because Stacy will let you know. Stay tuned. many that have questions, spiritual questions, and would like to have the answers to that. And we have created something for you specifically for that. Um, on our website, you just check on it and it has this big sign up that says, God questions. All you have to do is just to go online and ask us your questions. And we are so excited to answer those to you, to help you, to guide you, and to give you some direction in the help that you need. Or if you like to ask us by phone, that will work as well. 855-515-5550. Or go to that website, barbtv.org. God questions. How hard is it when you work so hard to get to the point you want to be to succeed and to feel good about it instead of constantly fighting? And if it's you right now that is struggling with that, we have that answer for you today. Number one, don't give up. Allow God. And at the end, there is a short message for you in the music that Stacy Friends is going to share with you, but also with a little bit of a Bible text that will encourage you and strengthen you in a way to help you to keep going. Now, Stacy, you were trying to make it in the music world. You knew you had a gift. When it keeps having rejection after rejection after rejection, you put all your money into it, is what I'm assuming, because that's me I'm Absolutely. talking about. Sure, yeah. No, how do you not get depressed? Oh, well, you, you get depressed, but, you know, and you, and you do fall down and you cry. I mean, I, when I came back from Nashville and, and the, the record deal didn't work out for me for various reasons, I came back home to California 
And I hit the deck, you know, I, for about six months, I cried and cried and cried and really believed that somehow God had made a mistake. He had gifted me in the wrong way because surely if he had gifted me in the area of music, then, then I should be following that path and I should have made it, you know, swing the gates wide open. I should have been able to follow it and make it. But that wasn't the path that God had for me. And I, and after that, that six months of crying and feeling sorry for myself and feeling like giving up, you know, I remember waking up one day and just saying, and my husband and I both together talked about this, and just saying, you know, sometimes you have to find another path. If, it, if that's not the path and you still truly believe that that's the word God has spoken to your life and that's the gift God has given you, then really it's not about... Um, it must be about redefining what success means. And success must mean pleasing God and doing something that brings me my greatest joy and not worrying about the outcome, the financial outcome, oh. the, the um, you know, but being obedient with the gift that I had meant for us, for me, it meant starting my own record label, starting my own management team, um, doing a lot of my that own is booking. huge. It was huge. It was that like is just huge. huge. That is freaking, that's yeah. stepping out of the boat like Peter did basically. It was. Huge. And it was crazy. But we thought, you know, it's the, the alternative was waking up the next day and saying, okay, I'm never going to sing again. I'm not going to share my music with people. Well, I had to come to a point where I said, well, okay, so that way didn't work. Well, what about this way? And, yeah. and so we, we began building um, our own business around a publishing company, a record label, and a management you know, team. And we just kind of followed the, the model of the big boys. You know? I love this quote that it says in the Bible. It says, God does not qualify the call. The, no, it doesn't. God doesn't call the qualified, but qualifies the call. Yes. And you are called. Now, I have had that I spoke at, at places and just nobody almost showed up. Right. That, right. that kind of rejection. Have you experienced that? Oh, <laughs> too many times to count. You know, I'm going, showing up with, with my whole band at times and putting on a full concert. Well, I remember distinctly one time for four people and there was like four hands clapping at the end of the show. And you know, that's what the kind made of thing you keep going. Wouldn't you have wanted to walk out <laughs> almost walk out, out? And you feel like it's a personal attack. You do. Which it isn't. You do, but it's not. And and somewhere in the middle of that concert, I just remember saying, you know, I'm gonna dig deep and I'm gonna find the joy in this, the joy of a child that is playing, that is making a, a castle, that is that is uh, banging a drum, uh, you know, a child that finds joy just in the doing, in the creating. And um, sometimes you do, you have to dig deep into that. And truly my story has been finding joy along the journey and not waiting for the destination. What those were things. those silent hidden treasures? Well conversations with people that said, you sang exactly what I needed to hear tonight. Okay. Oh, um, yeah. Emails that came in after the night after a concert that said, I left early and I didn't talk to you, but I just wanted to tell you that your song made such a difference in my life. I can remember one story, um, a woman who who uh, was in a, an abusive relationship and she was um, very close to ending her own life and she left one night, she left her husband and took off in the car and she told me later in a letter that it was her intention to drive herself off a very steep cliff that, near her home oh. and she said her, the CD player turned on as soon as she turned the car on and, it, and a CD of mine was in the car player and she said, Stacy, as long as your CD was playing, I drove and drove and drove all night. I couldn't do it. I couldn't, I couldn't drive over that, that ledge because there was something in your voice that said that there was hope for me, that God still loved me, that, that I shouldn't give up. And, you know, I never knew when I was writing those songs that there would be a woman years yeah. later listening in her car whose, whose life, very life would be hanging in the balance. Wow. But God knows. You know, the scripture that says... Um, uh, uh, you know, Ephesians 2, 10, we are his workmanship created for good works that Christ has prepared for us beforehand. Mm -hmm. Those good works were prepared long before I wrote those songs. Wow. The good works that God wanted to do in her life uh, mm -hmm. was prepared for me beforehand. And as I walk in obedience and do the work that God gives me to do, I believe that he then, uh, he, he blesses it beyond now, what I can Doesn't that possibly. bring you a huge amount of joy? Now, your latest CD yes. that just came out. What is it called? It's called Everything You Love Comes Alive. Why don't we listen to that right Sounds now? Sounds great. Open up your hands 
take what the giver has for you to harvest and to plant faithful in the work he's called you to pray for something good to grow oh and when it comes to you you know That was a gift from God, wasn't it? Absolutely amazing. Stacy's acoustic folk pop songs have inspired millions of viewers on major networks. Shows such as The Biggest Loser, America's Next Top Model, One Life to Live, All My Children, Nashville and Summerland, as well as a nationally released feature films at feet many label artists aspire to do but have never achieved. She's even a spokesperson for World Vision. And if she would have quit and would have not continued, Satan would have won and millions of people would have never received the gift of her voice that God had intended to. Stacy, God put you out there. God helped you to, to keep going. Why do you think he allowed so much opposition? Oh my goodness, because it's the testing that, that produces the gold, right? All of those tests, all of those 
obstacles that, that we go through, that we have to overcome, they refine us, they chisel us, they really get our hearts focused on what exactly it is that God has for us. And I think it gets rid of a lot of the distractions. It takes them all out. Yeah. 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 So your latest album, what inspired you? Everything You Love Comes Alive. Uh, that album was inspired from really coming out of a very barren, hard, difficult season of my life where I wasn't doing much songwriting. I was going through a lot of family challenges. And um, really, I hadn't written and hadn't dug deep into the gift that God had given me in, in months. And I picked up the guitar one day and started playing around and just singing. And, and a lyric came to my mind that, that God, your love is liquid, filling the hollow spaces with warmth and mm. weight. And, and I began seeing this whole imagery of how God was like water and how his love gets into even those barren, dark, um, dry places in our souls. And how he loves us so much that he nurtures us with himself. His light, his love are like soil and light to our hearts. And so I had this whole imagery of, you know, just something coming alive, like these flowers come alive with sunlight and with water. Mm. And that, that that's how God's love is with each of us. And um, so that was really the, the core of the new album. Wow. It's, yeah. It sounds just, it, God has truly, truly gifted you. And, and now you're on the other end. But what would your advice be for the people that try to get to where you're at? Cause, and that doesn't mean just music. It could be a job. It sure. could be knowing God has gifted them and they just deal with that wall the that the enemy is putting yeah. up. Yeah, it's difficult. It, it, and you'll have some days where you just really do feel like giving up. But I think that if you really set your heart on doing that which you love, that which you're good at, that which God has equipped you for. And, you know, I've had the, that verse in Timothy so often that, that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power yeah. and of love and sound mind. And those are all gifts that he gives us to, to walk out with our gifting and to not be um, intimidated by fear, but to know that God has given us um, authority and, and a good, solid, sound mind um, and love to love wow. on others with our gifts. Now, you, you said a little earlier that you are into poetry, which is kind of an art Yes. when you really think about it. But didn't you just write a book and put some of the poetry in that as well? I did. I, I wrote a book called Flourish, and this, this book is really about um, my own creative process and what it looks like to, to create and to be a creative person and to be a believer and to receive things from the Holy Spirit and then really have that have, be a channel of creativity um, in whatever medium, whatever gift you have. And so I wrote about my experiences as well as experiences of other artists and friends I know who are creative in different fields. Yeah. And um, so, I, yes, I wrote about it. It's called Flourish. Yeah, wow. Thank and then, you. Right now, are you working on a new CD? Where are you at? I am. I'm writing for a brand new CD this, this, uh, this season of my life, and I'm hoping to, re to release it later in the year. And um, I'm excited. I'm kind of in a creative, bubbly phase right now. I've got a lot of songs stirring around in my mind and, and a new theme and message that God is, is teaching me in my life. And so that's kind of where I'm getting the information and the, the, the inspiration to write. So what is it that God is teaching you right now? He's teaching me how to embrace change and to not fear That's it. a hard one. <laughs> I know, I'm that not very good tough, at it. That is tough. I'm you know, terrible at it. Because we I, say, God do this, yeah. and then at the same time, we expect him to yes. do it this way, but he comes from a total he, different angle. Yes, and I really believe that, that, you know, some of us really like to see the blueprint and the map and all, you know, we want to see it beforehand, but God doesn't give us that. He, he says, you know, my word is a light unto your path, a lamp unto your feet. Well, that just lights a little bit of a path, yeah. right? Um, and sometimes that path takes us along windy turns, but I'm, I'm learning to lean into him in those turns and to not be afraid of those changes because it's his process completing and perfecting us. That that's wow. what change is about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if there's one piece of advice that you could give to those that want to get on top of that mountain. Yes. What would it be? Oh, it would just be keep, keep going, keep going. Even on the days when you feel like no one's listening and no one cares. Um, even on those days when you don't feel like your, your, your world is responding to what you're doing, just know that God is for you. He's in you. He's working in you to will and to work that. for his good pleasure. Stacy, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. I want to give you my book, Ransomed. Yay. And, and I hope you'll going. read mine. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Thank you. Awesome. And then real quick, if people want to get a hold of you, what's your website? Yes, it's just www.stacyfrenis.com. Thank you for coming. Thank you. It's an honor. Thank you so much.
You know, the Bible talks about it. The Bible talks about the situation that, that you're in, that you're dealing with. And I want to read with you Romans 5, starting at verse 3, that, that I know could help you how to overcome those moments. First of all, what you need to know, that the results that you're looking for, like Stacy said earlier, might not be the results God has in mind for you because he thinks a bigger than you are thinking. And this is what it says in Romans 5, starting at verse 3. And not only this, but we also exult in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, and perseverance, proven character, and proven character, hope. That's what Stacy was talking about. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has or who was given to us. And this is the secret, folks, because we know it's God's call. We start walking on the path and then we take over. We think we can make it happen and we start working for God without God. Does that make sense? So we do it our way. But what happens through those testings, through those hard times, through those breaks, it forces you to become focused on the Holy Spirit's leading, which helps you to have removed pride, which takes all the struggles and, the, and all the hassle kind of in the right perspective. And when you start leaning on God to succeed the calling that he's given you on his life, the results will be much bigger, much stronger, and much better because God is in it. And it backs it up. So we're going to Galatians 6, verse 8. And here it says, For the one who sows to his own flesh, just that, about, that is just what I was talking about, for the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit, which we learn when we connect with God, to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And it's not just you, but that is for everybody else around you. And I would love to help you and connect with you. So would you call me and tell me your story? 855-515-5550 or go to barbtv.org. God loves you. God will help you. And even if it is hard, you start to see that God will make something beautiful out of it if you let him and don't quit. Keep going. God loves you. And so do I. Have a great day. that every single time that there is a problem, it is so easy to say, God, where were you? God, why? And it is your fault because you did not hear me. Uh, poverty really hurts. It hurts. It's painful. How do you live of $150 a month? How we survived, I don't know. But we would go one meal a day and sometimes we wouldn't eat anything for days. Because uh, when you look at suffering, the first thing we're saying, where is, where is God? Yeah. Well, why am I going through this? If God is good, if God is powerful, why am I going through this? Drugs, drinking, it was a down. So Everything. actually the poverty was almost better than poverty the rich was even life. Better.